many of us go into nursing because we have these, um, you know, the overarching desire to help other people. And with me now is Dr. Sue Ann Bell. She is an assistant professor with the nursing school at the University of Michigan, and she also does work with the National Disaster Medical System. Sue Ann, it's good to see you. Thank you for having me. Uh, you've done a lot of work in a lot of various, very hard situations. How would you, I guess, compare what we're dealing with the pandemic right now with all of the other disasters that you've done work with nationally? I think the biggest difference that I'm seeing right now is that this is, um, you know, something that's affecting the entire world um, and our nation particularly. So some of those resources that, you know, might be able to be targeted to one specific location. And by resources, I mean um, staff and supplies and um, things like that. Instead of targeting them to one affected location, they're really needed across our entire country. And that's really one of the biggest challenges we're facing right now. So many of us are reading and we're seeing things online about the plight of the medical professionals who are really on the front lines here. How do you, um, how does disaster preparedness change for nurses who are on the front line right now? And what kind of tools can administrators and hospital administrators bring to them to, to kind of help them through this crisis? I think one of the biggest challenges um, for nurses right now that we need to be thinking about are, are um, you know, safety for healthcare workers. The, the lack of PPE has been widely discussed in the media. It's a real issue um, for, for many healthcare providers and especially nurses. And if there's one thing I could say, it's that um, nurses need to protect their personal safety if they're going to continue to provide um, quality and safe care, they need to put their, themselves first. And unfortunately, or fortunately, many of us go into nursing because we have these, um, you know, the overarching desire to help other people. And so it's a real challenge for nurses based on our, you know, our ultimate goal is to provide care and we're a profession of caring. So to try to put ourselves first and thinking about our safety, it, it's, it's hard for many of us to prioritize. And when you're looking at um, a pandemic like this, and you've done other work with disasters and hurricanes, wildfires, and it's an extended period of time, what is the danger of burnout um, for a lot of the nurses on the front lines here? And I guess what kind of um, maybe mental health um, components can help them deal with what the, what the burnout is? Well, I think a lot of nursing professional organizations have put out materials about self-care and about nurses prioritizing self-care. Um, and I think those uh, tapping into those professional resources is a great thing for nurses to do in the you know very few minutes of spare time they have. But some things I can think about are um, taking regular breaks, um, trying to avoid social media uh, as much as possible, or taking a break from social media, um, leaning on trusted family and friends for for support right now, um, getting you know regular nutrition, some exercise, regular sleep. Those are all things that are very hard to do when you're you know overtaxed. But it's those those things if you can prioritize your own self care um, that can really help as this um, help take care of yourself as this is something that's going to last for a long time. And when we look at that and we, and we know that some nurses may become infected or they'll need to go in quarantine for 14 days or so, we're, we're also looking at the supply of nurses and how many actual nurses we have in the system. What does that look when um, you stand back and, and you say as a system, um, we need to get more nurses into the system or what can we do to kind of make sure that the ranks are, are, are full? Well, I think one of the challenges right now is that there are not just nurses, but healthcare providers needed desperately in many areas across the country. And we just don't have enough providers um, for what's needed. And that's, you know, goes back to what we talked about in the beginning is that, you know, this is affecting the entire country and, you know, globally. So what we're having to think about and having these very, very challenging conversations about is, um, um, changing required ratios for patient care and um, using other forms of providers um, so that nurses can attend to the most um, the most pertinent tasks to them and have more help and support from um, other types of providers that's one thing that's being talked about you know working more and longer hours is is something else um, but you know that's really not sustainable um, over the long haul so that's definitely something that needs to be considered
Uh, we read some reports that um, medical students or doctors who are going to be graduating in the spring, they're already kind of green lighting them through so they can go ahead and start to help. Is there any kind of larger conversation about training nurses, about um, different levels of nursing or anything that would get more people into this? Or do you also see this as a change that might affect people who do go into the profession? That maybe it's something that there might be a shortage of nurses because they see what this is and um, they say maybe this is not what what I want to do. You know, I had someone say the other day, I heard someone say the other day, there are those people that um, when there's a fire, they run towards it, and there's those that run away from it. And I think when it comes to people making decisions about their future career in a healthcare profession or a nursing profession, that that's going to be a consideration. You know, I think there's a number of people, or what I'm seeing is this immense um, volunteerism among people who you know have some skills and they want to help and they're willing to put themselves um, into positions where they might put themselves um, at risk and I think seeing that is you know a really gratifying thing um, and I think we will be seeing that as people um, as we emerge from um, the COVID-19 pandemic and people are making choices about their future I think we'll see um, you know choices made about going into the healthcare profession exactly because of this. We're also seeing a lot of amazing pictures and we're hearing a lot of amazing stories of nurses who are the ones who are holding hands of people who, um, who have this disease because their loved ones can't be there. Um, what would you say, and, and people are either they're turning lights on their porch or they're making signs and they're really keeping nurses and doctors um, in, their, in their prayers. What would you say that, um, that nurses need from us right now, from people who are are watching this and they're they're scared just like they are. Um, you know, as I I said a bit already, I'm seeing this amazing outpouring of um, support for healthcare providers, um, and I think that's really just a wonderful thing. And th just those messages of you know the yard signs or um, I, or you know food being ordered for hospital staff or um, you know people's partners going the extra mile to take care of, um, you know, of children and family responsibilities. I think those are the things that that mean the most right now. You know, just a caring word really can go so far. Um, and I, I'm really seeing that happening all over the place. And you have also written about kind of looking back after disasters and, and, and writing about what you can do differently and kind of projecting into the future. This will, there will be a lot to be written about this and since we are just still in the beginning stages of, of COVID-19. Um, what do you see coming out of this in terms of how we do get prepared for something like this in the future? We've long um, in the U.S. been in a reactive state to disasters. Um, rather than, um, you know, a prepared state. And I think that if this is underscored anything, it's that that has to change. You know, we saw that with Hurricane Maria, we saw that with the California wildfires, is that we're, you know, when it happens, then we react. But I think, um, I think knowing that um, there may be an upswing in cases after this uh, um, initial flattening of the, of, of the curve, um, we have to be prepared for that. So we're going to have to take those steps to be prepared, not just for another potential surge, but for what might be coming our way um, further down the line. For example, you know, um, there's going to be more hurricanes, tornadoes, wildfires. Our system is already taxed. We have to start thinking now about preparing for that. The other thing we have to start thinking about is, um, you know, we're in the initial response phase where we're seeing huge numbers of, of people affected by COVID-19. We also need to think about what the kind of health needs will be for people, you know, after the number of cases go down um, and what the recovery period might look like outside of just COVID. Okay. Uh Dr. Sue Ann Bell with the University of Michigan Health System and Assistant Professor at the School of Nursing, and you're also with the National Disaster Medical System. Thank you for all you're doing to uh, you. prepare our nurses and to uh, work on the front lines, and we wish you all the best. Be well. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.